Whether it was due to dropping an image that promotes indecency, controversially altering an original release, or even seemingly stealing a concept from another source, each of these posters landed various directors and studios in the doghouse in the wake of being unleashed on the general public. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 movie posters that led to massive lawsuits. Number 10, PK. Amir Khan sued over promoting obscenity in society. Sitting Pretty is the fifth highest grossing film in India, beating Avengers Endgame in the top 10. It's hard to imagine that the Amir Khan starring PK was once the subject of a lawsuit due to one of the posters used to promote the celebrated feature. Centered around a humanoid alien trying to get to grips with planet Earth and everything that it is to be human, including questioning superstitions and religion, one of the advertisements circulated for the feature at the time depicted a nude Khan covering himself with a stereo System. A law student then claimed that this specific image would promote obscenity in public, leading to an eventual lawsuit that would later be dismissed by the Supreme Court. This clearly had little effect on the release of PK in the end, though, as the feature went on to become the fifth highest grossing Indian film worldwide. It also won five Producers Guild Awards and two Screen Awards. PK done good. Number 9, The Hangover Part 2. Mike Tyson's face tattoo leads to lawsuit. Now, the poster itself may not have been the sole reason for this particular lawsuit, but it was definitely a key factor in it when all was said and done. On the back of the success of the first Hangover film in 2009, it was only a matter of time before Todd Phillips returned to direct yet another investigation of a night of debauchery. Yet before the Hangover Part 2 had even touched down in cinemas, the tattoo artist responsible for the iconic ink synonymous with Mike Tyson's face, which now found itself on Stu's mug, filed a lawsuit for copyright infringement. This law lawsuit involved S. Victor Whitmill asking a judge to order Warner Brothers to cease using the image in the upcoming film, and in marketing materials such as the movie's poster which contains Stu very much brandishing the artwork. If successful, this suit could have potentially led to the film being pulled from release, costing the studio millions. However, Warner Brothers would eventually agree on a settlement with Whitmill shortly after the film's release. Who knew a little bit of facial ink could cause so much trouble, eh? Number 8. Jaws Public go to war over movie poster. When it comes to memorable movie posters, few entries come close to the iconic image of a great white shark sizing up its splashing prey used for Steven Spielberg's 1975 masterpiece. Yet deciding upon the image for the Jaw film poster in the first place wasn't exactly a straightforward issue. Though Roger Castell would hold the claim to being the person responsible for the image that would later take the world by storm, as he was for The Empire Strikes Back's legendary poster too. This visual actually had its origins elsewhere. When the novel was originally released in 1974 by Doubleday, Paul Bacon produced a black and white and fairly bland cover of a shark staring up at a woman swimming against a plain black background. Feeling as though Doubleday's image was a vital part of the creation of the Bantam paperback cover and eventual film poster designed by Castell, the two publishing companies found themselves going to court over the issue. Ultimately, this lawsuit led to the people in involved with Doubleday's original cover all getting decent sized checks for their early work on such an unmistakable piece of art. Number 7. Cuties – Death Threats and Backlash Follows Release of Poster Sparking controversy before people had even clicked on the film in question on Netflix, Cuties may not have been faced with a lawsuit solely because of the poster promoting the feature on the streaming service, but it definitely added fuel to an already raging fire. In the wake of the aforementioned Netflix poster, Poster garnering the wrong sort of attention, resulting in a petition to get it taken down and those who saw the film at Sundance explaining how the marketing material didn't reflect the feature they saw at the film festival, the streaming giant was forced to apologize and update said images and descriptions. However, the film was still faced with a lawsuit from the Texas Grand Jury, with Texas Tyler County District Attorney accusing the feature of breaking the state law, forbidding the lewd exhibition of the genitals or pubic area of an unclothed, partially clothed, or clothed child. On top of this, the film's director, Mamuna Decore, received death threats for her part in making the film, despite having nothing to do with the truly dreadful American marketing for the picture. It was just a big old mess. Number 6. Camp Hell, Jesse Eisenberg sues for false advertising. 
advertising. 2010 was a career-defining year for rising star Jesse Eisenberg. Sure, appearing in David Fincher's Oscar-winning The Social Network wasn't a bad move, but who can forget his terrific work in the year's other Eisenberg classic, Camp Hell? Don't worry if you missed the actor's work in this unmemorable horror thriller, that's likely because Eisenberg merely made a cameo appearance in the feature. But that still didn't stop Lionsgate from throwing the actor into the spotlight when it came to the film's release on DVD. Quickly realizing what the studio were up to though, Eisenberg went out of his way to file a lawsuit against Lionsgate, claiming the focus on his brief turn in the flick to be false advertising and a violation of his right of publicity. Eisenberg filmed the controversial appearance in 2007, years before he was a hot property as a favor to his friends who were making the low-budget horror. In the end, Lionsgate's attempts to exploit the star's name and face to earn an extra buck upon its home release would ultimately result in the actor looking for $3 million in damages. This is why lying is bad. Number 5. The Roommate A lawsuit is threatened over the use of a college. From one low-budget horror thriller to another, here we have Christian E. Christiansen's 2011 critical flop, The Roommate. If the fact that the film went down like a lead balloon with critics wasn't bad enough, The Roommate also found itself on the receiving end of some additional backlash after making the decision to have the Christie administration building from Southwestern College in Winfield, Kansas be a focal point on the movie's posters. The college itself didn't feel as though the permission to use said building in promotional material had been properly obtained. This led to the educational establishment exploring legal avenues, citing that the use of the building in this sort of teen horror flick could damage its and the college's image. As the film went on to find its audience within the teenage demographic, earning $52.5 million at the box office somehow, the college continued to question the use of their building, leading to the Christie administration building being removed from the film's website and future promotional material. Though no lawsuit was officially filed, Southwestern College still ultimately managed to take their building back. Justice, I tell ya. Number 4. Dexter Disturbing poster blamed for a fall Now, of course, Dexter is a TV series rather than a movie, but the lawsuit attached to this poster is far too good to not mention on this list. We've all been there, walking up a set of subway steps only to notice a fictional serial killer's steely gaze and soon find ourselves shocked into a painfully embarrassing stumble. <laughs> if I had a nickel, eh? Well, a New York judge clearly hadn't experienced this unfortunate turn of events and had little sympathy for the lady who was terrified at the sight of Michael C. Hall's iconic shrink-wrapped Dexter mug in Grand Central subway station that she suffered a debilitating ankle injury after tripping in a panicked state. Her lawsuit filed against Showtime in February 2015 explained that she felt the network were creating a public hazard by promoting a disturbing, provocative, shocking, and fear-inducing image of Dexter on said stairs. Unfortunately for the pedestrian, she also had to suffer the pain of defeat in the courthouse too, with the judge ruling in favor of Showtime. But her compelling story will act as a warning for her fellow civilians for years to come. Watch where you're going for crying out loud. Number 3. Old Boy Spike Lee sued for copyright infringement. It's only natural for an artist behind the artwork used for a movie poster to be somewhat protective over their creation. After all, they're the ones who put in the time and effort into bringing the promotional visual to life. So if a studio decides against compensating the person behind the poster eventually used to market their feature, they have every right to be a little bit pissed off. Juan Luis Garcia found himself in this frustrating position in the wake of designing the poster for Spike Lee's Old Boy remake. With the features advertising agency still using the designs, despite Garcia declining the company's low initial offer to use the work, Lee would respond to Garcia's open letter appealing to the director for his assistance by tweeting, I never heard of this guy Juan Luis Garcia. If he has a beef, it's not with me. I do not know him. Cheap trick writing to me, yo. In the end, though, Garcia's lawsuit against Lee's production company, 40 Acres and a Mule Filmworks, was settled, with Garcia later replacing his earlier open letter with a statement saying himself and Lee had put it all behind them. Number 2. Iron Man 3 – Copying the poster design from another comic Though Marvel was enjoying a glorious time at the box office around the time Iron Man 3 soared into cinemas in 2013, and it still is to be fair, a lot of the sparkle was taken off Shane Black's underappreciated Tony Stark trilogy ender when things took a legal turn upon its release. Claiming that Marvel had copied their work in creating the poster for the MCU mega-hit, Ben and 
and Ray Lai filed a lawsuit against the Titan, citing copyright infringement and unfair business practices. The Lai brothers claimed they had been hired by Marvel as comic book artists in 2002, on the back of their work on the Radix series in 2001. These were a group of comics centered around characters with mechanized armor. Sound familiar? One look at the Iron Man 3 poster side by side with the character of Caliban from the Radix comics seemed to suggest they could have had a point. Yet Marvel Entertainment would eventually provide enough evidence to a New York federal judge to prove that the Iron Man 3 poster was in fact an independent creation, meaning the comic book giants had won this particular legal war. There's just no stopping the MCU, folks. Number 1. Couples Retreat – Discrimination After Cutting Out Black Couple Despite starring the likes of Vince Vaughn, Jon Favreau and Kristen Bell, 2009's Couples Retreat is a largely forgettable affair, remembered more today for the multiple lawsuits filed against it than the actual content of the feature itself. Soon after the film landed on screens worldwide, former model Irina Krupnik filed a $10 million defamation lawsuit against NBC Universal, after an image of her was used in a masturbation scene involving Favreau's character. However, the Manhattan Supreme Court judge would rule against Krupnik in the end. Then, in 2020, actor Faison Love filed another lawsuit against Universal Pictures. This suit accused the studio of racial discrimination due to him being cut out of the film's posters that were used overseas. Love and Carly Hawk made up the only non-white couple in the film, with the actor releasing a statement saying, I want to ensure that future generations don't have to endure the racism and whitewashing that I've experienced. On top of this, Love also claimed that his co-star, Vaughn, was brought in to advise him against making a big deal of the situation, telling him he thought it would have been a bad career move. The lawsuit would later be settled in January 2021, with the two parties reaching an amicable agreement.